Hi, I'm Catherine Ingram. And I'm Mark Matusik. And we'd like to welcome you to Gotham Salon, formerly known as Dharma Salon. We have changed the name uh, because we want to be more broad in our coverage of events in New York City. Yeah. Today we're going to be talking to you about uh, an event I did last week with Eve Ensler uh, at Barnes & Noble to launch her new memoir called In the Body of the World. Uh, this is an extraordinary book. It's a testimony of her time uh, healing, being diagnosed with uterine cancer, and then healing uh, from cancer. And it also becomes a journey into uh, the metaphor of cancer in the world, cancer as, uh, as a symbol of what we're doing to the environment, uh, uh, the rape of women, uh, and violence against what she calls the body of the feminine, uh, including her own but also the larger global question. And she does a beautiful, brilliant job, I think, of, of not, not um, aggrandizing herself, no. but making her journey into a symbolic pilgrimage uh, of healing, uh, global healing, personal healing, and, and spiritual healing, and coming through the fire and being transformed. I loved that event um, at Barnes & Noble. You were the interviewer on the stage with her for this, for this book launch. Um, I was struck. I hadn't heard her speak um, before uh, in any public way. And I was struck with how distilled her, her, her expressions, her concepts, her ideas. And I sensed that given the hell she's been through, mm. given the hell she has witnessed in the Congo where she's been doing that fabulous work, um, that it's almost like she is just speaking these one-liners that are a summation of, of uh, you know, really like a lifetime of insight. Mm. Uh, I was really impressed by that, both watching her speak and then I read the book in one day, the book In the Body of the World. It's excellent. It's a fantastic book. And the thing about Eve is she's always coming from her core. She can only ever speak from that very direct and passionate experiential place. Uh, and this is the most revealing she's ever been in a book before. Now you've been friends with her a long time. Yeah, 25 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So you knew her when, literally? <laughs> I knew her before the vagina monologues, and I can tell you, but she was always herself. Mm -hmm. you know, even when she was a struggling downtown playwright in New York, she was always herself in the sense of being, being passionately uh, concerned with violence against women, passionately concerned with environmental issues. She was an early nuclear uh, activist. Uh, and she, was, she, she, she has only become more and more um, powerful. But did she always have this incredible capacity for distillation of, or has that become more intense in, in, through what she's been through? She's really always had it. Oh. Yeah, I, mean, I think that she's become more uh, clear as an individual through mm -hmm. the experience of being diagnosed with cancer and going through that, you know, that, that purging mm -hmm. uh, experience. But she's always been very focused uh, and very, very clear, unusually clear about what she sees in the world, what she sees as possible in the world, in the way that visionaries are. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she said to us a, a couple of years ago, I want to start a movement, I want to do an, an action where a billion women rise around the world uh, on a given day to, to, uh, to protest against violence uh, against women. And we all thought she was, you know, we all thought she was a little nuts. Well, she did it. Uh, she did it this year. A billion women raised, uh, uh, rose up in 207 countries. And now this coming year, she's going to do two billion women rising. So that's the way visionaries work. They yeah. don't take no for an answer. And that's the unique thing about Eve is she absolutely doesn't take no for an answer. Uh, and she is determined to change this situation for women. I also felt in her, both in her book and in her conversation with you on stage, a great like sweetness and tenderness and love mm. uh, that just... She just seems so generous. Um, you know, she she spent some of that evening thanking all these old friends who were sitting in the audience. Um, uh, I mean, these are just some not signs of greatness, really. That she has, she has faced death so many times now with what I mean, she's lost seven organs. Did she say? Yes, yes. She had a stage four uterine cancer. Uh, now she's been three years cancer free. Mm. So, it's so in the body of the world, I loved the, all the ways that she wove in her own personal life, which, you know, uh, is so intense. Mm -hmm. um, but as you said, looking at the, the large-scale 
body of the actual world. Mm-hmm. Um, very, very sensitively and insightfully done. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. And, and she also had brilliant editing on this book, which always helps. <laughs> Uh, and it's getting rave reviews, mm. uh, and I hope, I, to my mind, it, it's sort of an instant classic. There's nothing like it. Um, it's, it's, the, it's the mirror image of Susan Sontag's Illness as Metaphor, yeah. and yeah. O- only seeing spirituality and seeing connection where Susan Sontag did not. Did not, yeah. And Excellent. Yeah, that's yeah. a great point. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful book. Yeah. And I'm, I, I'm read proud it, of it. I read it in a day. I read it in one day. I couldn't stop reading it. Yeah. yeah. So get yourself a copy, and uh, I think you'll be very, very moved by this, uh, by this wonderful piece of work. Thank you. We'll see you next time. See you.